Today we're going to take a look at integrating Active Directory with Morpheus. This gives us the benefit of offloading the work of user management to Active Directory, which may already be set up within your organization. Then, by talking to Active Directory, Morpheus can automatically handle the creation of user accounts and even sync changes throughout the user lifecycle. So let's take a look at how those work. In Morpheus, identity sources are integrated per tenant. They can't be shared, they have to be individually set up on each tenant. So let's take a look at the master tenant account for my lab here. And we can see that within the tenant detail page, we have the identity sources button. If we click on that, we can see any identity sources that are currently integrated. And you can see that I have Active Directory integrated here. The way that the integration works is that Active Directory groups are mapped to Morpheus roles. When a new user logs in for the very first time, Morpheus is going to automatically build the user account complete with name, email address, and it will put the user in any roles that it needs to based on any group associations that that same user has on the Active Directory side. Let's take a look at a simple example here. I have an Active Directory server and within the server I have two main groups that uh, I've associated my users with. We're going to see in just a little while how these groups play in with the integration within Morpheus, but for now let's just take a look at the groups. So I've pulled up one of my users here. The two groups that we're really looking at are the Morpheus admins and the Morpheus users. Um, all of my users who are eventually going to have a Morpheus account are at least given the Morpheus users group and some that should have a higher level of privileges are going to be in the Morpheus admins group. And we're going to see how that plays out when we go to take a look at the integration on the Morpheus side, how that's going to uh, manifest when the new user accounts are created. So let's click cancel. That was John Smith. You can take a look at another example user that I've created here as well. You can see that John Jones is only a member of the Morpheus users group, whereas John Smith was a member of both the Morpheus users group and the Morpheus admins group. So back on the Morpheus side, now if we did wanna add a new identity source, we can uh, from within the tenant detail page and then clicking on the identity sources button, we can click this add identity source button. There's actually a number of different identity sources types that Morpheus supports, one of which is Active Directory, which we're talking about here, but there are a number of other ones as well. In this case, we don't need to integrate a brand new one. We can take a look at one that I've already configured prior to starting this video. To start off with, there's just kind of some basic configurations we have to make. We have to give it a friendly name within the Morpheus system. We have to identify the AD server. That's going to be either the host name or the IP address for your Active Directory server. We have to identify the domain that our target objects reside within. That's our, our users and our groups that we want to go after. We can indicate whether we're using SSL or not. And then we also need a binding user um, to authenticate with Active Directory with. Now for ease, I've gone ahead and just used the inbuilt administrator account because that has full rights and I know I'm not going to run into any, um, any authentication issues down the road. Um, you don't have to do that if it's, uh, you know, per your organizational policies to use a separate service account, that's fine as long as it has access to all of the Active Directory objects that it may need to read in order to build the Morpheus accounts, that's going to be fine as well. But if you do have access to the inbuilt administrator account, that's a, a very easy one to select and, and we know that that one's going to have all of the required rights that it needs. So those are kind of the basic configurations. And then beyond that, we're looking at configurations that affect how the user accounts are actually built once the user logs into Morpheus for the first time. So a required group, you can see that here, that's an optional configuration. I chose to make that configuration, but what a required group does is it means that an Active Directory user must be a part of this group in order to have any access to Morpheus whatsoever. That's not required, we don't have to do that, but I've done that so that any Active Directory users that don't have the Morpheus users group, they're not gonna be able to access Morpheus at all. So anyone who I want to be able to access Morpheus has to at least be a part of that Morpheus users group. Now up here, we do have to define a default role. And what that does is if the Active Directory users uh, 
associated groups don't line up with any uh, role mapping within Morpheus that I've specifically created, I will fall back on that particular role. So probably a good practice is going to be to uh, set a role here which in Morpheus gives a, a lesser right set so that you're only giving your um, your higher levels of rights to uh, very specific individuals, which is kind of how I've set up this example here. So my default role is this catalog user, and this is really only going to give the user access to a very specific uh, service catalog view within Morpheus. They're not going to be able to get into the standard persona. They're not going to re really be able to do much other than get into the catalog view persona and make some tailored provisioning selections that I've set up there. Now, anyone who is a member of the Morpheus admins group as well, you can remember when we looked back at Active Directory a moment ago, one of my users was in both the Morpheus users group and also the Morpheus admins group. Anyone who is in a Morpheus admins group is going to map to the system admin role within Morpheus, and that is a pre-built role that comes uh, with Morpheus that essentially gives full and unlimited rights to that particular user. So. The way that this is going to work is that anyone who is in my Morpheus users group within Active Directory, they're automatically going to fall back to my default role here, which is my catalog user. And anyone who is both a Morpheus user and a Morpheus admin is going to end up receiving both of these roles, the catalog user and the system admin uh, system admin user role within Morpheus. And that is essentially going to give them full rights. Now, in a, an enterprise situation, this is probably going to be a much more complicated scenario. You're going to have a lot more groups within your Active Directory. You'll probably have a lot more roles within Morpheus as well if you've been using it for a little while. So this is going to be a much more detailed endeavor when you're in an enterprise situation. Um, those that are in various groups uh, within Active Directory are going to have uh, much more specific and tailored role mappings within Morpheus so that they can get to the exact appliance features that they need within Morpheus and nothing else. So this is a simple example, um, but this uh, it's very easy to see how this could be extrapolated out to a more detailed enterprise scenario with Active Directory involved. The other two options are worth uh, making mention here, even though I'm not using them. Enable role mapping permission, that allows administrators within the tenant. So let's say that we were setting up this identity source for one of our subtenants. If we enable the role mapping permission, that means users that have sufficient uh, role rights can come in here and update these role mappings with the Active Directory groups. Now they won't see this part over here where they could potentially see um, details about the binding user. Um, they could see details about where the server lives, um, the domain, things like that. They won't see or be able to edit any of that. But if we do enable this, this checkbox here, then our administrators within the subtenant will be able to update just these role mappings. And if you don't want them to be able to do that, you can leave that unchecked. Manual role assignment would allow the subtenant administrators to edit a user after it's already been automatically created by Morpheus as a result of the Active Directory Association. It would allow uh, someone to go in and manually update the role assignment for the Morpheus user. So essentially it would go against uh, any uh, role mapping that you've set up here. So if you want the role mapping to strictly pertain to exactly how their groups are associated in Active Directory, we would leave this unmarked. If we want to allow users to be able to edit users individually within Morpheus and potentially change their role assignments, then we would mark that. So in my case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that unchecked. So now if we take a look at users, we see that I've got two users here. One, this is actually just a, this is my own user account, which is a, just a created Morpheus account. It's not one that was built as a result of Active Directory. John Smith did come from the Active Directory Association, but what I'm gonna do for the sake of illustrating the point is go ahead and just delete that user. So we don't have John Smith in here at all. 
But if we were to log in using his credentials, and these are the credentials that are set up in Active Directory, so we can see that there is no user account for John Smith here at all, but we do know from looking over here previously that he is already set up within my Active Directory server. So, oops, if I go to log in, Now it will allow me to log into Morpheus because um, Morpheus is talking to that Active Directory and then it's going to build the user that it needs to build based on uh, that group association within Active Directory. So the way that this user was set up, its default view happened to be the catalog uh, service catalog persona, but we can actually just switch to the standard persona and we can see that you know he has access to everything along the menu, doesn't seem to be that anything's missing, which is what we would expect since he should be a system admin uh, role. And if we go down to users, we can see that the existing user that was already there is there, but now Morpheus has already built this new user and John Smith is gonna have access to Morpheus, uh, which is based exactly on his group association within Active Directory. We can see that he has the default role um, because he was in the Morpheus users group, which is the one that, that grants access at all. And then he also had the additional role applied because he was a Morpheus admin uh, group member within Active Directory. And we could uh, do a similar thing with John Jones if we wanted to do that as well. We could log in as him and it would automatically create that third user there as well. Now this Integration with Active Directory does also give us a couple of additional benefits. Uh, this is not just a one-time sync where the user is built and then it never gets touched again. You can continue to manage your users only on the Active Directory side, which is very convenient. And then anything that changes with those users is automatically gonna sync down. So if I were to change uh, the user's name within Active Directory, if I were to change their username, if I were to change their password, or if they were to change their own password, if I was to change their email address, things like that, all of that uh, will sync down to Morpheus and that will continue to automatically be updated. Same thing with roles. If I were to change the Active Directory groups that John Smith is a part of on the Active Directory side, that will automatically filter down to Morpheus and he will have his roles updated based on that. So I can continue to tailor his role access on an ongoing basis because of the integration with Active Directory. And similarly, if I were to disable the user in Active Directory, he would no longer be able to log in until I re-enabled him on the Active Directory side. So thanks for taking a look with me at the integration between Morpheus and Microsoft Active Directory. There's a lot of convenience that comes with uh, integrating those two technologies with each other, especially if you're already managing users within an Active Directory server. Now you also get, uh, as a side benefit, um, that user management comes right along with Morpheus and doesn't require you to really do much user management at all on the Morpheus side. Thank you.